welcome to Wine Wednesday with me, Alfie Jean, here to give you a wine and a tune that I think goes with it. Ooh, yes! What we do on Wine Wednesday. Um, this week is interesting. I'm going to give you a little bit of a travel vlog because I went to this winery over the weekend. I went to Oliver Wineries and I just want to tell you all about it. I'm just going to share this experience. So, we're going to do a two-parter. Two parts, yes, because I am going to review for you a red and a white from this winery because I just enjoyed my time so much, and I think why not share both both parties, right? So I went there with my band called Kind of Jazz. We had a little bit of a gig there, and afterwards decided to go get some wine and relax. Now, when you first show up to Oliver Wineries, it is stunning. I will say, absolutely stunning. They it's they welcome you with beautiful landscaping rock formations these wonderful little ponds waterfall fountains and tons of floral beautiful plants and butterflies there's tons of these beautiful butterflies flying around fluttering around it was magical i mean literally this path to get into the building it was just magical and beautiful um and we sat outside the patio it was 90 something degrees outside but that was fine it was totally fine not a big deal we all did flights and most of us did reds because we're all red lovers i did have one cider because this winery does do ciders on top of their wines so why not try one i had their lavender cucumber cider and it was very very good uh perfect for that type of weather and i would definitely drink that over and over again um the red wines out of all of them my favorite was the shiraz and which was the table favorite so i am going to go over that bottle with you for sure because it was just so delicious and everyone agreed so why not tell you all about that. Um, first, I want to go a little bit about the winery's history. Um, they had been around since 1960, and it was kind of like a hobby of Bill Oliver. It started out as a hobby, and it turned into this big aspiration. It Their, their biggest thing is just to dream big and do big things, um, and so their biggest thing was just to present a, a non-California grape region so you know when it comes to wines uh, a lot of wines you know the best grapes i mean they're grown in california and then tr imported over here or transported not necessarily whichever um <laughs> they're transported over to the midwest or wherever and uh, wineries can you know they'll use those grapes to make their wines well they grow their own grapes and they just really wanted to set a standard of non-california grapes and they do a great job it's it's pretty pretty beautiful i will say i love it when people just like take the, their ideas and they make them into actions um and they have they've had great results they are actually top 25 in the um wineries to visit of the u.s and they're also one of the largest or the largest winery in the u.s so i was floored that this is right here in indiana it is based in bloomington indiana southern indiana and it is not that far from from my home so how exciting to go to a large winery like that um now they also are really they have a, a gentle process for all their winemaking that just showcases the all, all natural flavors of the grapes in their wine. So they, they have a, a notion to nurture instead of interfering with anything that the grape will naturally give. So a gentle process to give all natural, beautiful wines. Um, the also amazing thing is that when it comes to their labels, they actually really want to showcase Indiana and you know what is available what is what is around um <laughs> when it comes to wildlife and floral um and plants things of that nature so a lot of their bottles are going to feature uh birds that are very easy to find here in indiana and in southern indiana and a lot of the floral is also native to indiana so how neat um they really want to showcase where they're from and i think that's just super fun and the even better thing is that they kind of wrote they 
roped in some local artists that are also, you know, friends of theirs that are very talented and had them design the labels for them. So they actually have three artists that are on hand for these to um, diversify the feel of each type of wine. So the red wines were all, all the labels were designed by William Zimmerman who unfortunately passed away in 2011, but his bird series is going to be forever featured on the winery red labels. Um, and his approach to it are very non-processed drawings of birds that really, you know, represents what the wine is. It's not, it's non-processed, it's clear, it's crisp, it's just beautiful as it is. Um, and then for the white wines, there is uh, Ken Bucklew, who does all the floral fauna stuff with the whites. So all the fruits and the botanicals and the little songbirds and with the florals and stuff like that, the whites are all him. And the ciders are actually done by a different artist as well. His name is Ken Pope, and he is a pop artist to represent kind of more of the fun, uh, experimental ways of their ciders so they pick these artists specifically upon their styles and what would go better or what would go best with their wines so i thought that was super cool and just a really nice local touch um that you'd love to see right um the fact that they have all they have different wines different ciders but they all have a common theme and that is fruit forward so they want to really showcase all the fruit flavors that put, that go into their wines and from what I tasted, they did a fine job of that. Uh, now, for the wine itself, this is a red, it's bold, and a little bit of some tannins in there, of course. And the neat thing is, is that they actually have like cocktail recipes that involve their wines on their web pages, or on their product page of their website. So this one specifically, there is a recipe called um, Cupid's Crush, and they outline this whole recipe so you can put a little bit of, sh of Shiraz in there and create this delicious delight. Um, so I think I might try that at some point and just see what it tastes like because I do enjoy this wine. Um, now let's, let's get to the bottle. The bottle is always, always my favorite part, right? Yeah. So this is the bottle and it features kind of a... Uh, hawk or falcon i am not 100 <laughs> i don't know i always get those two kind of mixed up but it's a very crisp clear um illustration it's very beautiful um i love it and um i'm just ready to pour it out and drink some more so here we go we are gonna do this just a little little bit but as you can see it's a pretty dark it's a dark red here beautiful lovely it's very aromatic, you can smell it, like as soon as it goes into the glass. It's very um, smelly, and <laughs> and that's totally fine. Oh, it's just smell, it just smells so delicious. Yeah, it's very tasty. The fruit, the fruit flavors in this, in these wines are so delicious. I mean, it just really pops. And you can tell that there's, you know, there's cherries and plum and other berries in here. I mean, it's just, it, it makes you salivate a little bit, but it's not like super sweet. So, mm, mm, mm. delicious, it's delicious. Um, very good. And the cool thing is, is that it does have like oak and vanilla, a little bit of tobacco, but it, those are not like super prominent. I think the vanilla is more so than out of all three of them. And honestly, if you, really take a lot of sniffs and you smell your your glass and you're gonna smell that vanilla it's pretty it's pretty prominent and I you know um, I always find that really interesting when one scent uh, really stands out in a wine and I just think it's so good mm. mm -hmm. yeah so on to the song yes <laughs> I am going to do a iron and wine tune that is called autumn town or autumn leaves town autumn town leaves wow that's okay i will double check and you're gonna hear the real title in the next segment here all right Can fall. 
wall On either side of a garden wall He laughed all night to keep the embers glowing Some are leaping free from their moving cars Stacking stones around their broken parts Autumn Town Leaves. I thought it was just really perfect to go with the Shiraz from Oliver just because it kind of reminds me of the Midwest, uh, a Midwestern autumn. Um, <laughs> and I think Midwestern autumns are so beautiful and so nice, but also um, not all places get all four seasons like that. And this specific song, some of the things about mice and fields and the song burns, it just kind of was perfect for what Oliver Wines put on their labels, what they represent when it comes to being proud to be in Indiana. So I hope you enjoyed this week and enjoy the rest of your gosh darn week. I will see you next time for part two of the Olive Winery reviews. All right, take care.